Welcome, brothers and sisters. Another wonderful day that the Lord has given unto us that uh, we may share in His Word. And uh, we want to look at uh, number 11 in the series, the latter end series. The presentation being the glorious state of the church during the latter rain, which follows the shaking. I know the Lord has uh, good things for his church, which he wants to speak to it, but it will take attentive ears to be able to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the churches. And so, wherever you are tuned in, wherever you are watching, we thank the Lord that uh, he can give us another chance to spread the gospel. Truth is not uh, locked down. Use this opportunity to do something useful to the society and to the people. And uh, the blessings of the Lord will attend to it. And so, before we start with the presentation, I'd like us to pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for thy love and thank you for thy mercies, Lord. As we hear thy word, let it impact us and change us. And let us have the glory of the Lord rising upon us and use us for thy holy work. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I'd like to read something in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 55 as we start this presentation the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 55 bear with me for a minute The book of uh, Isaiah chapter 55 and see what the Lord is speaking to us. Uh, it is a chapter that doesn't have a lot of verses. It has only 13 verses and so I'd like to go through it. As we look at uh, the glorious state of the church. Here is what the word of the Lord says. In Isaiah chapter 55. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy and Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. 3. Incline your ear and come unto me, here and your soul shall live. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. 
Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knoweth not, a nation that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. So, the glorious state of the church, when it drinks from the Lord, it shall be glorified by the Lord, and the nation shall come unto it. Verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. This tells me that there is a time we shall call upon the Lord, and he shall not be found. We shall seek him, and we shall not find him. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for we will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Now, for as the heavens are higher than us, so are my ways higher than you, your ways, and in my thought your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sour, and bread to the eater. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish, which it shall please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I send. Verse 12, For you shall go out with joy and lead forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the mighty tree. And it shall be the Lord for a name, to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be Cut off. This is the sure word of the Lord, and it shall not go back to him void. We are looking at the presentation, glorious state of the church during the latter rain which follows the shaking. And uh, we are seeing that the, the, the church that drinks from Christ, the Lord himself shall glorify it. So, in the previous section, we looked uh, mostly at uh, the shaking that should take place. We looked at uh, the experience of those that the people of God must have to get the seal of God. And the shaking that shall take place, we looked uh, deeply into those things and uh, we are just building on it. After that shaking, we are told that... Uh, when you read 5T, page, uh, page uh, 82, we are told that um, then after the shaking will the church of Christ appear fair as the moon and clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners. The seeds of truth that are being sown by missionary effort will then spring up and blossom and bear fruit. Which means that the word of the Lord that is going forward right now and uh, it shall not go back to the Lord void, but it shall produce that which the Lord has actually designed it to produce. Uh, just uh, looking at the previous one, we saw about um, uh, the experience that we must have, and it is the experience of the Day of Atonement. There must be a flitting of soul to remedy the, the defects in character, sigh and cry. And we saw that uh, he, during that time there will be a mighty shaking and sifting. And then the filthy garments, we looked at the book of Zechariah. They have to be removed. Then we are clothed with the Christ, the robe of Christ, which is found in uh, the book of uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 60. Sixty-one verses ten, uh, and uh, then um, the seal of God, separating from the mark of the beast, 
the seal that is found in Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 shall happen then the latter rain will be follow, falling on the people in the loud cry going uh, forward. Th those are some of the things that uh, we had looked at um, in the previous session and uh, we are just building on them. And so fair as the moon, clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners, the church must go forth conquering to conquer. And uh, the glorious, what, what are we looking to as we speak about the glorious state of the church? I, I want you to look at the statement in early writings page 271. It says, they, members of the church, moved in exact order like a, a company of soldiers. There will be unity. The reason why you can uh, at least say that uh, the, the, the church of God as it is, it's not in a, uh, in a glorious state. It is uh, because we are told at that time the glorious church of God, that they, the church members, will be able to move in exact order like a company of soldiers. Something that um, you don't see right now as we speak. But uh, what, what we see at the moment that we are speaking is uh, the spasmodic uh, uh, movements of this time fitful for untrained uh, horses, she says. So one pulling and another one just there. One going the other side and the other going side. So we cannot say that this is the glorious state of the church that is envisioned uh, when the prophet says that the mighty angel of Revelation chapter 18 will come down with power and uh, will be the, the glory of the Lord will fill all the earth. We, we don't see that right now because uh, the, the church is not in its glorious state or the church is not going in uh, like a company of soldiers. Uh, Great Condovers, page 611, we are reminded also of something. The angel who unites in the proclamation of the third angel's message is to lighten the whole earth with glory, his glory. A work of worldwide extent and unwanted power is here for here for told. And so, uh, I'm sure that the Lord is uh, bringing up his army. And uh, when you look at the Advent, Advent movement of 1840s, 1844, it was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first angel's message was carried to every missionary station in the world. And uh, in some countries, there was the greatest religious interest which has been witnessed in any land since the reformation of the 16th century. But uh, when we look at um, the church right now, you cannot see it in the state of uh, the Advent movement of 1840s and to 44. Yet we are told that um, in the closing work, it will be more glorious than it was in the early reign and uh, the movement of 1840s. It will be like the autumn leaves falling from the trees. You know how the leaves fall from the trees during the autumn leaves. This movement, the glorious state of the church in the last day, shall be a movement under the last warning of the third angels, and the power that shall attend to it shall be likened to none other. Just like uh, when you read uh, the book of uh, uh, Daniel chapter 12, uh, verses 1, you find that uh, there shall be trouble that has never been at that time. Just to prior Michael standing up, there shall be a time of trouble as it has never been since the earth was. And so if there have been trouble as never before the earth was, then it means that even at that time, the third angel's message shall have a people who are shining more than it has ever been. The, the magnitude of the problem also reveals the magnitude of the glory that shall attend to that angel. So if uh, persecution shall be aroused to a height that um, has never been before there since the world was, then it means that even the glory of the Lord that shall be shining and the power that shall be attending to the people, uh, it has to have that enduring that matches the trouble that are there. Because the trouble cannot be there that is more than what has ever been and yet the experience is not like 
there has never been uh why do i say that when you look at the book of uh, first corinthians the book of first corinthians uh first corinthians chapter 10 chapter 10 is it was uh, 13 look at it first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 i'll put it on board it says there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it and so if uh, the persecution of the church at that time will be more than what has ever been then it means that uh, the the church shall be in a state in its glory more than what has been ever experienced there and uh, this experience can only be reproduced uh, when there is a, a closer working with Christ more than it ever it was ever before now you you can imagine now uh, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. That means uh, translation without seeing death. And you have just to read the story of Enoch and see how close he walked with God to understand how close we have to walk with God if we have to be translated without seeing death. The, the man was uh, always stressed with the evil that was going on in the world. His visits his journeys to the city were the most uh, painful visits that he could ever make when he saw the vice that was going on in the cities. Uh, I'd like you to see uh, that is. Uh, Christ triumphant, page uh, 49, paragraph 5. If we have to have a character like Enoch, let us see what Enoch went through at his time. That is Christ triumphant, page 49, paragraph 5. He, Enoch, did not make his abode with the wicked. He did not locate in Sodom thinking to save Sodom. He placed himself and his family where the atmosphere would be uh, as sure as possible, as pure as possible, sorry. Then at times he went forth to the inhabitants of the world with his God-given message. Every visit he made to the world was painful to him. He saw and understood something of the leprosy of sin. After proclaiming his message, he always took back with him his, to his place of retirement some who had received the warning. Some of these became overcomers and died before the flood came. But some had lived so long in the corrupting influence of sin that they could not endure righteousness. They did not retain their purity of faith, but returned to their former customs and practices. What I wanted you to see is that every visit he made to the world was painful to him. He understood something of the leprosy of sin. So, for the church to reach its glorious state as never before, even way beyond what um, Enoch went through, they have to read the story of this man. They have to have a closer communion with Christ and be able to have uh, a glory that supersedes what has ever been experienced in this world. It is by looking unto Christ that such a character will be reproduced in us. And so, the work that will go on will be similar to that day of Pentecost, as the former rain was given in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the opening of the Gospel to cause the uh, 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 and springing of the precious seed. So the latter rain will be given at its close for the ripening of the harvest. And uh, when the harvest is ripe, you don't see it as if, it doesn't look like the, ha the, the, the crops which are, are not mature, the crops which um, have just uh, budded, something of that kind. Because the crops which have just budded and uh, are on the stem, they are tender when they are pressed, they break forth and uh, 
they can't endure any storm but uh, the crops which have matured actually you can't just crush them easily yes and at that time then we shall know according to Joel chapter 223 those who follow after the Lord whose going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto them as rain as the latter rain unto the earth and so we, we don't have to wait for this experience. It is something that we have to, as we go through the daily, uh, what can I call them? The daily tests, as we go through uh, the daily interactions with the people, as we meet the daily challenges, it is reproducing a character that uh, can be fitful for harvest. And it is upon enduring. When you endure one step, you can go to another step and another step and that way. And so it calls for a life of endurance, a life of committal, a life of surrender. We read in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 12, 17 and 21, that uh, God in the last day, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And those who call upon the name of the Lord in that time shall be saved. Uh, Great Controversy, page 611. When you continue with it, uh, I'd like just to put something on the screen also that um, the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marked it is opening. The prophecies which are fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled in the latter rain at it is closed. And so great is the power that is going to attend to the second and the third angel's message as they swell into a loud cry. And then now, uh, uh, what will happen at that time uh, let me see uh, she says that uh, all controversies will be revived all controversies and new ones will be revived that is uh, Christ triumphant, speaking about the loud cry of Isaiah chapter 58 and uh, what shall be happening to the church. I I'd like to read from Christ triumphant from uh, page 350, just the closing work of the third angel's message. We are talking about the glorious state of the church and the enduring it will have to have at that time to be able to go through the time of trouble that has never been before. Look here. She says, and I'm quoting the prophet because he's a true prophet. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Isaiah chapter 58. This is in the scenario of uh, uh, the third angel's message in the most holy place when the trumpet enters into the most holy place to start the work and the ending of the work. She says, that the last great conflict will be short but terrible. People think that uh, there have been uh, suggestions that uh, um, the time of trouble, the great time of trouble will take three and a half years. Some say it will take seven years. Some say almost a year. But uh, I don't want to enter into many conjectures about that. I just want to go with what is written here. The last great conflict will be sh short but terrible. How short, you ask me, I can't enter into that. You do your research, be satisfied with what is there. And so, continued on, I'm reading from uh, Christ Triumphant, from page 350, paragraph, uh, paragraph 1, continued in paragraph 2. The last great conflict will be short but terrible. All controversies will be revived, new controversies will arise. The last warnings must be given to the world. There is a special power in the presentation of the truth at the present time. But how long will it continue? Only a little while. If ever there was a crisis, it is now. Decided efforts should be made to bring the message for this time prominently before the people. The third angel is to go forth with great power. Let none ignore this work or treat it as of little importance. The truth is to be clear. To be proclaimed to the world that they may see the light now you remember this is the context of uh, isaiah chapter 58 
And you know the work that uh, brings in the latter rain and the loud cry is the work of Isaiah chapter 58, the right arm of the third angel's message, which is the health message, the medical missionary work, going forth with mighty and power as it is in uh, Isaiah chapter 60, arise and shine for thy light has come and many. The, the world will be in gross darkness, but the Gentiles shall come unto truth. Many shall come to thy light. She says, this is our work. The light that we have received upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. All in regard to this matter is not yet understood. Whether it be COVID, whether it be whatever you want to call it. Much of this thing about the third, the mark of the beast is not exactly, uh, it's not yet understood fully. And it will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. As the, the unrolling of the, the scroll is the unsealing of the message itself to be understood by the people. But a most solemn work is to be accomplished in our world. The Lord commands to his servant is to cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. She, she says, 350.5, there is to be no change in the features of our work. It is to stand as clear and distinct as prophecy has made it. We are to enter into no confederacy with the world, supposing that by so doing we could accomplish more. If any stand in the way to hinder the advancement of the work in the lines that God has appointed, they will displease God. No line of our faith that has made us what we are is to be weakened. We have the all landmarks of truth, experience, and duty. We are to stand firmly in defense of our principles in full view of the world. This is our work to the four corners of the world, and the three angels' messages have to fly like never before. Even right now as we are speaking, there should be a showers of the latter rain going on. The problem is it is going on, but the people are not experiencing it. How, how do we know that uh, the, the showers of the rain are dropping already? When you read Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32, you understand that uh, my doctrine shall fall forth as the rain. And uh, uh, she talks about, uh, in uh, yes, in Deuteronomy chapter, let us just go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and read something. Deuteronomy 32. This is the presentation, the glorious state of the church in the series, the Lateran series. Thirty two. Verses 1 to 4. This is important so that you may get the whole thing. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1 to 4. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I'll speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I'll publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect for all his ways are, judge, are judgment, a God of truth without iniquity, just right as he. That is without guile, 144. And then he says that because I'll publish the name. When you read John chapter 17 verse 6, the work of Christ was to manifest the name of the Lord. When you read about 144, they manifest the name of the Lord because they are standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb, with the Father's name in their forehead. And so, and then we speak about the dew and the showers, which are the doctrine. And what are these uh, things that um, maybe you may be saying? I, I want to refer you back to the quote that we had. It says that, um, look at the, the last portion of it. The last sentence, we have the all landmarks of truth, experience and duty. We are to stand firmly in defense of our principles in full view of the world. And so I'm speaking about the showers of the latter rain. How, how, how do they come to us? How do we know that they are falling or they are with us? Uh, when you look at, um, uh, let me put um, 
see if I can give you this. Uh, Christian experience and teachings of E.G. White. First of all, I, I'll read this and then I, I go to something else. It says, I asked the meeting, I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen and was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the counsel of the two witnesses to the laudations. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and it will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear this straight testimony. They will rise up against it and this is what causes shaking among God's people. So we know what causes the shaking, but how do we know that... Uh, the latter rain is with us. 7 BC 984 paragraph 5. 7 BC 984.5. What does it mean to have the showers of the latter rain amongst us? The glorious state of the church. We are not to wait for the latter rain. We must not wait for the latter rain. It is coming upon who, upon all who will recognize and appropriate the dew and the showers of grace that fall upon us. So, what are these dew and the showers? When we gather up the fragments of, of light, when we appreciate the sure mercies of God, who loves to have us trust Him, then every promise will be fulfilled. Isaiah 6, 20, 11 quoted. The whole earth is to be filled with the glory of God. So the showers are the gathering of the fragments of light and appro appreciating the sure masses of God and this is why uh, she says that um, in this last line she says that we have the old landmarks of truth experience and beauty we are to stand firmly in defense of our principles in full view of the world when we do this when we start gathering uh, the fragments from um, the traditions of men, the rubbish that has been brought into the church, then we shall see the shower starting to fall on us, the dew starting to fall on us, and the church will go forth in the glory of God. Uh, and so, the, the glorious of the church is also featured in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 20, where actually we are told to repent and be converted so that our sins may be blotted out during investigative judgment when the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus. We must receive him inside our hearts before we see him coming in the glory of the cloud. The glory of the Lord is to rest upon uh, patient waiting saints uh, and as they go forth giving fearlessly the last message. They should sigh for the condition of the church and they should be able to have a distinct uh, character from what it, the worldlings are having. So, it, here is just a, a graph of what continues going on during the glorious state of the church. Faithful sigh and cry for abomination. Danger and depression of church greatest. There is a shaking. The pur the purging is going on of the chaff. Then uh, there is the sealing commencing as we near the close of probation. Latter rain falls. Church revived. Before the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. That is one SM one eleven, and th then we shall see the Lord doing mighty work among His people. So. How do we receive the refreshing from the Lord? It is only those who feel destitute of who they are that can run to the Lord to get what they are missing. They agonize for their victory and they agonize for their filthy garments as uh, it were with Joshua so that the garments may be uh, removed and uh, they may be clothed with the garments of the priest uh, and be able to minister. Because when you look at the state of... Uh, Joshua, the filthy garment was taken away, and I, I, I like to 
go back to that prophecy once again. Zechariah. Chapter 3. Having only 10 verses. And uh, he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. He knew his uh, destitute state. And so that is why he was standing before the Lord. He was not standing before anyone. He was standing before the angel of the Lord. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. He went to the Lord. Didn't run to anyone else. Unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I'll clothe thee with change of raiment. Remember Isaiah 6 to 10. And I say, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with the garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And so, what, what is this mitre that uh, the angel of the Lord? Closed, uh, closed uh, Joshua with when uh, you go to the book of Exodus, you find it uh, in, uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, chapter 28, verses 36 to, th 36 to 38. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, this is faith, and grave it up like the engraving of sickness holiness holiness unto holiness to the lord and thou shalt put it on a blue lace this is a surety that the priest is keeping the commandments of god that it may be upon the mitre upon the forefront of the mitre it shall be this is the forefront this is the ceiling and it shall be upon aaron's forehead now it shall be where upon aaron's forehead what is uh, upon Aaron's forehead? A mitre, written holiness to the Lord, keeping the law of God, that Aaron may be bare the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in their holy gifts and shall be always before his forehead, and they may be accepted before the Lord. So to be accepted before the Lord, you must have in your forehead holiness to Jehovah. That is the name of the Lord. He is holy. That is why you are seeing that... Uh, in Revelation, Revelation 14, and I looked upon the Lamb, the, I, and I looked, and lo, a Lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his Father's name in their forehead. What are they having? The Father's name in their forehead. What did Aaron have in his forehead? Holiness to the Lord. It was in Aaron's forehead. The name of the Father, then now it's written. What did what was the experience of Joshua? A mitre upon his forehead. And so for us, the church to go through this time, it must bear the glory of the Lord, which is his name, the manifestation of his name. I hope you are putting this all together, the glorious state of the church. That is what we have to be. And so it is only when we feel our spiritual destitute condition we shall afflict our souls and approach the Lord to receive this holiness. And so the latter rain will bring uh, a boldness in our lives. It will bring about impregnable armor as it is in the book of Ephesians 6. And... Uh, you find that the elect will be sealed and they will stand in the presence. The glorious church will sit and stand in the presence of God without an intercessor, but not without a protector. Now, what will happen with the glorious church at that time? 7 BC 969. This is what we, we read there. His servants are to be distinguished from the world by the seal of the living God. Their words and their works are to reveal that they are laborers together with 
God. This is the state of the glorious church. You see, I, I like to repeat this. His servants are to be distinguished from the world by the seal of the living God. Their words and their works are to reveal, the, to reveal that they are laborers together with God. Now, th this was the state of uh, this was the state of uh, the disciples when they had received the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'd like you to see something when the disciples received the Holy Spirit. And if this manifestation was like so in the day of uh, the apostles, how should it be in our time? When now uh, When they receive this spirit, let us see. In, in John chapter 20, verses 22, we are told that he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And so, I'd like to point something to you before I go ahead and read something on John. He says, His servants are to be distinguished from the world by the seal of the living God. Their words and their works are to reveal they are laborers together with God. Their words. So, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit. What happened at that point? I'd like to point you to... Uh, this is a General Conference Bulletin, October 1, 1899, paragraph, two, paragraph 12. It says, by his, by his heavenly gift, the Lord has made ample provision for his people. An earthly parent cannot give his child a sanctified character. He cannot transfer his character to his child. God alone can transform us. Christ breathed on his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This is the great gift of heaven. Christ imparted them, imparted to them through the Spirit his own sanctification. Hold on there. He imparted to them his own sanctification. His servants are to be distinguished from the world by the seal of the living God. His own sanctification. Then next, it says, He imbued them with the power that they might win souls to the gospel. Then, henceforth, Christ will live through their faculties and speak through their words. Go back. Their words and their works are to reveal that they are laborers together with God. Back to the quotation. Henceforth, Christ will live through their faculties and speak through their words. They were privileged to know that hereafter, he and they were to be one. That is, at one man. They had received atonement. They had, been, they had received the spirit of sanctification. The words of Christ were their words. So they were to be one. They were at one man. As we are to be at one man during the day of atonement. Or the day of at one man. They must cherish the principles and be controlled by his spirit. They were no longer to follow their own way. That is, they were no longer to do their works, as I can say, to speak their own words. The words they spoke were to proceed from a sanctified heart and fall from sanctified lips. No longer were they to live their own selfish life. Christ was to live in them and speak through them. He would give to them the glory that he had with the Father, that he and they might be one. So you understand the glory that Christ had with the Father is the full reception of the Holy Spirit. And this is what he gives because when the quotation starts, it says that he gives them the Holy Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This is the gift from heaven. And this is he imparted his own sanctification. The glory that the Father had given him. Now he gives to them. This is the Spirit. And then, when they receive the spirit of sanctification, they'll have the glory that the Son had with the Father. And they will be at one man. We are talking about the glory of the church. We are talking about the glorious state of the church. And how it has to look like in the end times. And so, what we have to do 
is to determine our standing with the Lord. Are we to delay our preparation? Are the other people to be sealed while we are not sealed? That is a question that is left to everyone to think about. And so I'd like to close with a few slides here, just reading through them as you read with me also. In closing, the time is not far distant when the test, this is the major shaking, will come to every soul. The mark of the beast, the major shaking, will be urged upon us. Those who have step by step yielded to all the demands and conform to the worldly custom will not find it a hard matter to yield to the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threaten, imprisonment, and death. In this time of the major shaking, the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. True goldness will be clearly distinguished from the appearance and tinsel of it. I'm really waiting for the presentation of the ten virgins. It will bring out this clearly. I know the Lord will give us information. Many a star that we have admired for its brilliance will then go out in darkness under the, this mighty uh, procession of the virgins. Chaff like a cloud will be borne away on the wind, even from places where we see only flowers of rich wheat. All who assume the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will appear in the shame of their own nakedness. When trees without fruit are cut down as cumbers of the ground, when multitude of false brethren are distinguished from the true, then the hidden ones will be revealed to view. This is 5T, 80-82. Continued on. Then after this mighty shaking will the church of Christ appear, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. The seeds of truth that are being sown by missionary efforts will then spring up and blossom and bear fruit. So, I will not like you to just listen and uh, say amen. I want you to go outside there and be a missionary. Do something for the Lord. Sow the seeds. You will never know when the harvest shall come. But when the harvest come, then you shall have a crown on your head. And be told, faithful servant, enter ye in, thou faithful servant. Soul will receive the truth, will endure tribulation, and praise God that they may suffer, to Jesus, may suffer for Jesus. So we have here afflicting of soul, remedy defects in character, and we are seeing that uh, these things are going on. There is uh, a mighty shifting to happen, filthy garment to be removed, clothed with Christ's robe, so seal of the of God, mark of man in linen, then the latter in loud cry, fair as the moon and clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners, mark of the beast soon to be urged upon us. It's the zenith of the shaking. It is coming. The test of the mark of the beast comes to the church before the loud cry. You can go through Great Controversy 603 to 612, the final warning. Many will yield the faith in this testing time and receive the mark of the beast. This indicates that at the same time some will receive the seal of God, while one class receive the mark of the beast, the other receive the seal of God. The judgment of the living in progress during the purging time. And uh, if time be, if I get time, I will speak about the National Sunday Law and how the judgment happens at that time. The goal will be separated from the dross in the church. This is in allusion to Malachi chapter 3 verses 1 to 3, which describe the great Christ work of judgment in the most holy place. We are still in 5T page 80 to 82. The church may have... Uh, appear in the shame of their own, though the people will appear in the shame of their own nakedness. This is a reference of Christ's judgment message in Revelation 16 uh, 15. Those who have slighted the masses of God will appear in their own shame, cut down as cumbers of the ground. This is the irrevocable decision of eternal rejection. 5T 139 and 4385. Uh, there is uh, a link to the presentation on the title of the presentation. You can download it after the presentation and go through slowly if I'm going too fast. Chaff like a cloud, borne away on the wind. Here, under the figure of harvest time, a complete separation is presented. The time of judgment is a most solemn period, when the Lord gathers his own from among the tears. After the Lord has purged each individual in his church, the latter rain falls on that individual, and the loud cry is proclaimed by that individual until it swells and lightens up the whole world as others accept the light.
So, during the latter rain loud cry, the other ship in Babylon hear the message. They have yet to be sealed. Thus, before the work is closed up and sealing of God's people is finished, we shall see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. And so, what can I tell my brethren? What I can, can I tell you is this. I leave you with this. Last day events, page 179, paragraph 2. This is what I'm leaving you with. Think about this. I want you to think about this very prayerfully because it is upon us. It has been going on. They have been testing everything they can test, uh, the powers of darkness, and uh, it is not something that we are blind about. You, Even a child can tell you something is happening in this world behind the curtains. I'm not speaking up about COVID-19. Uh, there are so many things that are being implemented while actually the COVID-19 is going on as a, uh, uh, what do we call it? Smoke screen. Yes, you heard it well. While COVID-19 is going on as a smoke screen, there are things which are happening in the background. They're ripping a part of the freedom of people freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, and uh, liberty of conscience, all these things are being ripped off from behind. They have put a curtain before us called um, COVID-19. But behind it, there are so many things which are happening. Laws are being passed and implemented and being put in place. And so think about it, what is about to happen to this world. Uh, because everyone has a version of what is coming to happen in, to this world. I want you to think in Bible lines and uh, the spirit of prophecy, what it says. While actually people are being blinded, Satan is gathering his last army and putting everything in place so that when everything blows, there will be a change that many people will be surprised at. And they'll find many among us, they will be found without the garment that can be able to make them endure until the last time. And so the planning has been going on. And uh, maybe for people who don't know, the planning has been going on. And what we are seeing around us is a smoke screen of the real things. But I can assure you, things will come back to normal for a certain time. And then there will be that striking of uh, the leopard that you have never known. And so I wanted to show you something in uh, last day events as we close. Something that I was talking that you should think about. Um, last day events, 179.2. This is my closing point. This is my anchor point. The great issue so near at hand, the enforcing of Sunday laws will weed out from, will weed out those whom God has not appointed, and He will have a pure true sanctified ministry prepared for the latter rain, a whole wheat church. This is what I'm looking forward to. And uh, I pray that uh, I may not be found amongst the false shepherds and the false prophets. First of all is to give our hearts to the Lord and then we can be able to lead others to receive the same. It is to walk in the truth that we have received. We saw that uh, from 7 BC that uh, uh, the receiving of the dews and uh, the showers is the gathering of the fragments of the light, the principles which we have believed as uh, the core uh, principles, beliefs, uh, as a people of God, derived from the Bible and not uh, uh, fables and traditions. 
when we gather all this, then we are saving the showers and the dew of the latter rain. And I know people are saving them. We can be sure of that. The Lord is reviving us once again so that he may prepare people. And uh, as I posted in the morning, uh, the Lord allows things to happen the way they are. And these home churches that we are seeing so that uh, the people may go back to studying their Bibles. The home churches are meant for people to interact and study their Bibles deeply more than they have ever studied in the church. So that uh, when these things come to an end, he may have a people who now knows, understand their Bibles. Right now you have, a, uh, you have enough humble time to study your Bible without an interference of any clergy or a layman. To go on your knees and ask the Lord what said the scripture, what meaneth the scripture, without being influenced by an interpretation from any source. This is the time. COVID-19 is a blessing in disguise. I know you'll say this is heresy, but that is what how I'm seeing it now. So that we may close up ourselves, rethink again, meet our families and ask, have conversation, not just imposing beliefs on people not just telling people this says this and this says this this is a time that we are having family reunions so that uh, people may go back to the table and ask themselves what does the bible say how, how, how read it thou ask your husband how is this how are you seeing this ask your child how do you see this ask your wife am i understanding this thing correctly or what is it so that uh, we may be able when we come out of this pandemic and go back to our churches, we may say, no, that is not what the Lord revealed to me. What we are practicing now is not what the Lord revealed to me when I was in the house. Let us see. Let us study together and see what the Lord says. And then we shall have a true revival, reformation, and true Protestantism coming out of this COVID-19. Because people have been lazy to study their Bibles, they are moving about, they don't have any care about God. Now situations have made them to be in the house so that they may look at the Bibles, which actually I don't know when they open them last. And so the Lord may bless you. The Lord be with their families and uh, continue. Uh, spend time with God in prayer. That is what I'm encouraging people. So that uh, when the, the, the church is sealed and the number is made up of those who are to go out and do the work when uh, the Lord actually have a pure ministry prepared for the latter rain, you may be part of the that uh, ministry otherwise god bless you and uh, i know the lord uh, will keep us and uh, guide us in these end times when we seek him when we seek him he says that uh, for those who seek me i shall be revealed unto them let us pray heavenly father we look for the glorious church that we are reading about we are not accepted we have to be part of it. And so give us that an experience that can be able to endure such a time that we are talking about. Even now, so that uh, when everything blows up, we will have a people who cannot be shaken by anything. Glory be unto thy name. Give us an appetite of thy word. Help us to spend some time on our knees in fasting, in prayer, and in circulation of the material. The little chances that we have, help us to maximize them. And let your name be glorified and the glory of man be laid in dust. Let Christ be fully revealed in us for thy own sake name. Thank you and thank you and thank you for everything that you are doing. Help us to see blessings in everything that happens around us. And as you have commanded us to rejoice always, let this be our portion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God be with you. As you keep on unfurling the third angel's message, the three angels' messages around the world.